Welcome to the Spiritual AF Life Podcast, a magical place where your host, Heather Danielle, psychic medium, will bring the mystical woo-woo world down to earth in practical ways. Tune in every Monday for your weekly reading and on Wednesdays to hear fascinating conversations with spiritual experts, uplifting stories, and deep dives into the metaphysical world all to help you tap into the invisible guidance that's all around you. It's time to start living a spiritual AF life. Get cozy. The conversation is starting now. Hey, welcome to Overcoming Your Spiritual Fears. We are going to talk about everything that you need to know about the ghost paranormal and also the spiritual realm all right so hopefully by the time that you're done talking with me and listening to this conversation that we're having with each other you are going to feel so much better about all the spiritual woohoo stuff so first off if you don't know this about me I actually grew up when I was a teenager a sorcerer because one of my moms, one of my moms, my mom actually married someone who was a sorcerer. So I did practice magic and I seen black magic being practiced. So I know what it's like to experience the darker side of the paranormal and the spiritual world. Now, I was also extremely scared of ghosts i mean you bring up the word ghost you talk about it or anything like that like 1000 percent so scared i was really curious of the you know psychic realm and that kind of thing but i was definitely scared of it i thought it was like very taboo and i really fell victim to a lot of the things in the you know what you get in Hollywood and things like that in the movies and what they said about it. And we will definitely get into that. But I want you to know that you can probably relate a lot to what I am saying because I was 100% a scaredy cat. I really did have a lot of fears. And now I have like zero fears when it comes to the paranormal and the ghosts and the spiritual realm. Now, I will tell you one thing. I am not all love and light and rainbows and butterflies and everything is unicorns and glitter. I am also a realist, okay? And I know that everything isn't always hunky-dory. So you're not going to get any of that. We're actually going to go over ghost, the paranormal, and the spiritual realm. And I'm going to go over all the key points, the things that you need to make you feel a lot better about all three of these topics, okay? Let's get right to it. But before we do, I want to know, want you to know why you need to listen to this. Okay. And that is because your past loved ones are trying to reach out to you. Okay. They are trying to chat with you. And a lot of times we don't get their signs because number one, we're really scared of these signs. We might be like, oh my gosh, like that was a ghost or that was a demon or whatever it is when it wasn't. It was truly one of our own past loved ones, okay? And the other second thing is, is that your fear of any kind of spiritual stuff is going to subconsciously block those signs because you are scared. One thing that I always bring up is when I was opening up to my spiritual self, I was in my office and this was way before it became my office to do readings in and things like that. And I was reading a book on my nook. So I was reading a book on my nook, kind of like a Kindle. Do you remember those? So I was reading this book and I have read that it said that they can play with the lights in your past loved ones and they can, you know, manipulate electricity. And I was like, oh my God. And then I was like, grandma. And grandma was like my everything. And by that time, she was the only person that I had lost that was, you know, everything to me. And so I said, grandma, if you're around, please turn off the light. No joke. One second later, one millisecond later, all of a sudden, the light turns off. I was petrified. I mean, I couldn't even look up to see the light. I couldn't walk out of the door. I was frozen in fear. And 
that was an eye-opening thing for me because I'm like, oh my gosh, Heather, if you are this scared when you just asked it to be your grandma, you know, like this is telling you that you're not ready yet to really experience some of the signs that they have coming for you because that just scared the crap out of you. And when I finally did get the courage up to look at the light, the light was still on. So I'm like, how in the world did my whole room go dark in that second? And you know what it was? It was the Kindle or the nook that I was reading. It actually turned off at that moment. So still think that's a sign. So that is how it's going to change your life. It's going to get you more signs from those past loved ones and from your angels. Okay, let's talk about ghosts, okay? The 411 of things that you need to know about ghosts, okay? So when people say ghosts, they're usually talking about earthbound spirits. We typically do not use the term ghost for like our past loved ones. Definitely not angels or spirit guides. Those aren't known as ghosts. Usually it's going to be earthbound spirits. So earthbound spirits, they didn't cross over into the light for whatever reason, okay? It could be because they were attached to people in their life or things in their life. It could be because of their religion and their beliefs made them fearful for the other side. Like sometimes they wouldn't cross over because all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, now I'm gonna go to hell. Now here's a new one. And please don't fall victim to this. But there are some people out there that are saying really weird things about AI. And they're saying that you, when you see the light, don't cross over because that's a trick. Don't fall for any of that BS. Seriously, don't. <laughs> go to the light and you'll have lots of fun. It'll be amazing. I don't even know how people don't go to the light. And I do just have to tell you, though, about this whole light situation. There are some people that say it's totally BS that everybody crosses over, <laughs> but you can always come back. So there's a little bit of different things that people have experienced when it comes to earthbounds and they feel like no spirit is truly earthbound against their will because, you know, we have a perfect, you know, 100% amazing earth and planet and God has made us all perfect. So he wouldn't leave that loophole. So there's definitely some back and forth. I personally do believe in earthbound spirits and I believe they didn't cross over because that's the experiences that I've had. And it is because you have free will, 100%. Even after you pass, you still have that free will that if you want to go to the light or if you want to remain earthbound here. But here's one thing that I do agree with a lot of the people that are out there. And that is the fact that your guardian angel and your spirit guide is not leaving you. So anytime that you might worry about ghosts that you see on TV and they're of little children or they're of, you know, beautiful women or whatever it is, and you feel guilty about them, don't worry too much because their guardian angel and their spirit guides are around. And when they're ready, they're right there by them. So don't take it too hard. Now, another thing that you need to know about ghost is going to be that you have the authority to make them leave, okay? So if you think that you have an earthbound spirit, you can 100% say what you are going to allow or not allow into your space. It's just like physical boundaries. Like you're gonna to have to tell people, okay, don't come over at three o'clock in the morning. You know, you're going to say, okay, this is me time that I can't have my sister or my friends over all the time. That's gonna be the same thing with ghosts. You're gonna to have to have those spiritual boundaries. And the thing is though, you can't have those boundaries usually unless you say so, unless you make it known. Remember, we have free will, but we have to say what we want and what we will and will not put up with. So that's why I always constantly do a prayer before I go to bed saying what's allowed inside of my space as I sleep all throughout the day. I'm usually pretty open, but I will kind of like in my mind say, okay, I'm not open to, you know, spirits right now, earthbound spirits, that kind of thing. Now, if you have like a haunted house, like and you think you have an earthbound in your house, you might need a rescue medium. And a rescue medium is a medium who actually helps spirits cross over to the other side, okay? So don't worry too much. I'm going to go on to this next point here, which is 
they are also like toddlers. Okay. So when you say I don't allow like ghosts into my space or whatever it is, you have to truly mean it. And you have to say it like for real, just like with a toddler, you know, you have to be really firm with them sometimes. And they might try to press your boundaries and they might try to push your buttons, but you have to be firm and they have to be assertive and you have to be confident. They're just like toddlers. Now, here's another thing is that most of the time, if not all the time, they are not bad, okay? So earthbounds will hold the same personality they did when they were alive, okay? And I love what I have written here. It says, if they're a butthole in real life, they're going to be a butthole as a ghost. So a lot of those times when people are sensing things that, oh man, this one's evil, or this is a mean man. Yeah, it's probably a freaking mean man. He was probably a freaking mean man in real life. And then guess what ended up happening? He ended up dying. He stayed a freaking mean man and he might even gotten more grumpier. Now, those bad things do exist and we will talk about them, but I'm going to tell you something. In my experience, if you have not experienced it yourself in real time, and I'm not talking about in a movie, I'm not talking about on a TV show, I'm not talking about your friend, I'm talking about you. If you have not had an encounter yet of something evil or dark, then the odds are that it's not written in your life purpose and you don't have to worry about it. I say that with a, a lot of certainty. Now, you never know what the future holds for you, but in this moment of time, that would not be something that I am worried about. It is written in the plan of some people, but it doesn't mean that it's written in your plan. So are ghosts really that bad? I love watching like the Snapchat filters with a little dog and, you know, a little dog filter. And it just makes it a lot more fun and definitely a lot less scary. So I would check out some of those because it'd be a lot of fun. Now, if you're like, okay, Heather, that is great. That is fine and dandy. They're not all that bad. But like, how do I really minimize my exposure to them? Because there are a couple of things that you can do to help you be like, okay, I definitely need to like not have any of these things around me. The number one thing is to refrain from buying secondhand items or to cleanse some property when you bring them home. Because one or two things can actually happen. The first thing is you could actually bring a spirit home that is attached to an item. I'll be honest with you. That's actually not as common as you think it is. The second one is more common. And the second one is that you have the energy of that person left on it. So for example, I wear my necklace all the time. So my energy is going to be on that necklace a lot. So now if this is a chair or if it is an item that they use a lot, their energy is going to be on it. And you might be subconsciously connecting with it without even realizing it. And even though it's not truly a ghost, sometimes it can give you that feeling like there really is truly a ghost in your house. Okay. So the second way of decreasing your likeliness of dealing with ghosts is going to be upholding your spiritual boundaries, which we already talked about a little bit. So like saying those prayer prayers, going ahead and making them like feel like toddlers and you're like the parent and stuff like that, like it kind of sucks a little bit, but the more that you practice it, then the more that they're going to realize that, you know, they can't bother you or you don't want to be bothered and they'll just move on. Okay. The next thing is, is not inviting them in. So a lot of times, and you heard about this and we'll get into a little bit more detail, but sometimes we have a tendency to invite them in, whether it's going to be through like a Ouija board, through some kind of seance, or because we're really curious and we'll literally like invite them in. Now, I don't really know a lot of people who accidentally invite them in. I don't even feel like that's a thing. <laughs> so that is something to think about. Now, the other thing is to know that a difference between intelligent hauntings, residual, and also poltergeist, okay? So knowing about this is going to help you know, number one, what they are, and then number two, it's going to go in a little bit more detail on how to decrease the likeliness, likeliness of dealing with them. So number one is intelligent hauntings. This is something that you see in those paranormal shows where it's like they ask a question and they get an intelligent response. Like, oh, tap twice if you're here. Tap twice if you died here. You know, tap three times if you can hear me. All those kinds of things. So that is saying, okay, this is intelligent. They can hear what I'm saying and they respond accordingly. Now, residual haunting, that is going to be one that is more about the energy that that person has imprinted on the area in which you are. 
Okay. So this means that you always hear, you know, the footsteps going up and down the stairs at three o'clock in the morning. And that person is not truly a ghost there. That person's energy is there and you might actually see them and everything else. But for example, if you always, you know, got your shoes on, on the same couch every single day, and then you walked out the door and that's what you did every single day, then guess what? That is, you might be leaving an energy imprint and not even realize that you're doing that. So that is a residual one. And a poltergeist is very interesting. You might hear a little bit of back and forth on what a true poltergeist is, but a poltergeist is basically, it is human made. So a human has thought things and has created an energy field that actually takes on a mind of its own, if you will, and kind of becomes a ghost. But the good thing is, is that you can get rid of poltergeist, you know, because you're the one that created it. So now how do you decrease your likeliness of this? Okay, so intelligent hauntings, you're going to do everything that I talked about. Residual, you can't really do much about it. You can like cleanse the space. You can make new memories in that space and that can help break up some of that energy a little bit. But think about it, the more imprinted that that spirit's energy is in that area, the harder it's going to be to remove it, okay? And the same thing with poltergeist, it's going to be extreme emotions and usually they're negative emotions so trying to stay out of that headspace is going to be good but I'll tell you what I don't know anybody and I know a lot of people who have depression bipolar all that stuff that have been powerful enough to actually make a poltergeist so that's something that I don't really feel like you need to be concerned about okay I hope you're enjoying this because now we're going to talk about a little bit more help with overcoming your fears of ghosts specifically First off, if you have not seen that show, Ghost, you need to. It is a funny. It's great for the whole family. I love it. I love the British version of Ghost, and it is on HBO Max. I cannot tell you any more good things about it. I probably watched every single season at least three times. Now, they do have a Ghost American version, which I believe it is free on Amazon Prime, and it's different. I encourage you to watch both of them and see which one that you like. You can definitely tell the cultures playing into like the characters and the storyline, but I absolutely love both of them, and it's going to make you see ghosts from a different perspective because we always watch like the scary movies and no that's not how it always is like nothing is always like that so anyways another show that you can watch is called rescue mediums now they do not show this in the u.s it's a canadian based show but you can find the show episodes full episodes for free on YouTube. And that is going to be the rescue mediums. And it's really interesting because they help the spirits cross over. But before they do that, they learn a little bit about them and a little bit about their story. And it just makes it so much more real, makes it more or less scary. It makes you see the ghost as like real people. And even the ones that are grumpy that come across as quote, mean and evil. It's like, man, they were abused by their dad or whatever it is. And that's the reason why they were the way they were or they had horrible, you know, life or whatever. So anyways, it's really interesting. And there's some really cool show uh, episodes that like, man, there are twists like you did not even see. Okay, so now the next one is going to be I See Dead People. And this is by Jane Ross. And it's a book. And it's called How I Learned to Help Earthbound Spirits. This book was life-changing because when I read this book, I was really scared of earthbound spirits, of ghosts, but I also really wanted to become a medium. And I just was trying to learn everything that I could learn about it. And I was really jealous of her at the time. And she still has Jane Ross, who wrote this book, is an amazing, amazing you want to call her a medium, but she literally talks about the ghost waking her up at night because they're jib jibber jabbering and talking and chatting, you know, in the parlor downstairs. And, you know, she had like these two um, twins that were ghosts, but they were old ladies and like they would not stop bickering all night long. And then she just had to like tell her husband to go tell them to, you know, shush up, even though her husband couldn't even see the ghost. So it's also really fun and it brings it down to earth. And you will definitely be thinking of ghosts in a different way after you read that book. Okay, so I'm excited about this because we are moving on to the paranormal. 
Okay, so <laughs> like attracts like. So this is something that you really need to think about as I talk. So like attracts like, you've heard about this. Like-minded energy attracts like-minded energy, all right? So this is the same thing when it comes to spirits. So if there is a negative, a lower vibrating energy, so something that we talk about, like, oh, they're demons or they're evil, they are operating on a lower frequency because that emotions and everything else is operating on a lower frequency. Now, they're going to be attracted to people who are very low frequency as well. And just like the higher vibrating beings are also going to be very attracted to the other high vibrating beings. So now you're like, wait a second, am I really, am I low vibrating? Am I high vibrating? Yeah, sometimes you might dip down, you know, with grief or you might be scared or whatever, you might dip down, but it's what your energy consistently stays as. So mine is usually, you know, of course I'm human. I get mad, I get angry and stuff like that. But how are you consistently over a period of months and maybe even years? That's what we're talking about. But the lower vibrating, you know, bad spirits, if you will, they are really into people who are, you know, really prone to like violence and lots of anger and drug use and like even like domestic violence maybe and like a lot of craziness. They love that energy and they feed off of that energy. So keep that in mind because it's truly all about energy. So, you know, we kind of talked about it. Do you have a high vibrating energy or a low one? Okay, so that's something to think about now. i also ask yourself this question. Is it lifting your, is it written in your life plan? We kind of already talked about this. So maybe you had an experience with a ghost, but if you haven't had that experience with anything negative, then like I said, you're probably not going to be exposed to it now. So the next thing is, was it anything ever invited? Because it's important to know that because, and we'll get into it here in a second, but basically bad spirits have to be invited in. So did you read, you know, did you do a Ouija board without the right protection, you know, or did you do something else, some kind of seance or, you know, some kind of spiritual circle where you invited bad things in? I know my stepfather used to, you know, sacrifice animals, you know, like live chickens and things like that. And so I know that he, for a fact, was inviting bad spirits in because he literally told me, he's like, I'm going to go summon the demon second to the devil, blah, 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 blah. We use this chicken, you know, because he wanted to help this guy with a love spell to make his girlfriend fall in love with him. But anyways, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> okay. So that is some things to think about. And now this is what I'm talking about. Eddie and Lorraine Warren. So you might know about them because I believe that they helped out in the Conjuring movies or whatnot. Oh, and like Amityville Horror was one of like their first experiences. These are the real life people, the real life demonologists that worked behind the scenes. Um, I would say, but really they actually did work behind the scenes. They were like, what is it called? The consultants and stuff, but they were the ones that actually went to these places and dealt with these negative energies. And one thing that they always said was the negative spirits that you see on TV, that you see in real life or whatever that you've heard about, they must be invited in. They do not just always like show up at your house one day. They have to be invited in somehow. So a lot of times it's going to be through some kind of ritual for some kind of, like I said, seans, Ouija board and things like that. Now, these are things that you can watch out for when you're watching those paranormal shows. So kind of keep it in the back of your mind. Be like, oh, was something invited in? And then usually Every single time that I've watched, it's been like a hundred percent. It has been, it has been invited in. Something to think about to make you feel a little bit better about this. Okay. When you make a phone call, do you dial the number of the person you want to reach? Do you? Yeah. Usually you dial the freaking number. You don't just arbitrarily just freaking go ahead and press buttons and say, okay, who am I going to get? The exact same thing is like with a Ouija board. The Ouija board is not the problem, but the problem is, is that people are just calling on anything, anything that's out there. And so when they don't make a call saying, hey, I intend to connect to this, then they're going to connect to whatever's on the other end. 
So just like with you, just dialing a random number, you have no idea what you're going to get on their side. Yeah, you might get someone that's really awesome, but you also might get someone that's a horrible person. And it's the same thing with a freaking Ouija board. It's not the Ouija board's fault, okay? You just need to be able to use your tools and know how to use your tools. So I just love this. Okay, so now it says movies portray the paranormal the way way more severe than in reality, okay? Like Amityville Horror and the Animal Doll. And possessions are worse in movies. And oh my gosh, everything is. So if you are watching this podcast on YouTube right now, you will see a picture on my screen of Lorraine Warren with the real Annabelle Doll. In case you don't know, the real Annabelle Doll is a Raggedy Ann doll. It looks freaking adorable. Can anybody else... Like, is anybody else so annoyed with, like, these creepy dolls in these shows and the little girls that go running around with it thinking it's the cutest doll ever? It's not cute, okay? You can literally tell that that doll is demonic. (laughs) And so that's what I mean, is that movies really do portray the scary world way more scarier than it actually is, okay? There's no creepy dolls that look like that, that people are going to allow their daughters or sons to play with, Okay. No, that does not happen. (laughs) Maybe it does, but that's just like a special circumstance. Now, the same thing with possessions. Now, if you go into Eddie Lorraine's files and you listen to it, it is horrible. But, and there might be some levitation that's going on, but it's not like they are flying through the air and it looks like there's a tornado in the house. It's way more subtle than that. It's not craziness. You could probably even watch some um, possession, you know, exorcisms, if you will. It's not that crazy. A majority of them, there's a little bit of maybe like thrashing. There's a little bit of yelling, throwing up at the end. But it's not like turning your head around in a 360 degrees. Like that is all theatrical. It's all, all like that. Okay. And so then here's another thing too. It's like Amityville Horror. Oh my gosh, like all of us are like, oh my God, it's so scary. Yeah, but do you know that other people have been living in that house for like years and years and they've never had anything happen to them? So it's like, I don't know what happened back in the day to cause all that back when it happened, but it's not happening now. So it's like only, they're only going to show you those parts to make you scared because that's what you're paying for. You're watching a scary movie to get scared. So they're not going to tell you the good parts and they're going to make the scary parts really scared so they can make more money and you get what you want, which is watching scary movies and getting freaking scared. Okay. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense because now we are going to move on to the spiritual realm. Okay. So I have to tell you about the spiritual realm and your spiritual team, because this is going to make you feel so much better about everything we talked about. So just kind of like we talked about a little bit of the darker stuff, it seems this is where the light stuff comes in. And this is going to have some critical things for you to know. Okay. So first off is each one of us is sent a guardian angel. So just like we have a master spirit guide, your guardian angel is going to stay with you from the moment you were born to the moment that you transition to the other side. And your spirit guide is the same way, your master spirit guide. You might have other guides that might also be on your path. They may come and go. They might be here for seasons of your life. But your master spirit guide, just like a guardian angel, is never going to lead your side. Ever, 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 ever. They are assigned to you. Think about it this way. We are specs of the divine. We are specs of God. And we come here. We kind of get VIP treatment, if you will, right? Because we are, after all, God, right? Living this crazy human experience, okay? So we are going to come here with like a little bit of an entourage, okay? We got some homies to help us out. (laughs) And we also have ancestors. So your whole entire lineage. Do you think that they're just going to go over the other side and just like wash their hands of you? Oh, here's my great, 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 great granddaughter. Oh, wow. She's having a hard time. Okay. Well, she's SOL. (sighs) No, they love you and they want to help you too. And then your loved ones who you have known in this life, they also like want to help you. And a lot of times they kind of become one of your guides on the other side of a lot of the times, or if not, they're going to play a part to help you no matter what your relationship was 
at the time that they passed. A lot of times, if you had a strained relationship, if you had a difficult relationship, a lot of times when they pass over, they kind of realize what went wrong and they want to help you out even more. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so another thing is, is that you might also have members of your spiritual team from other places that you've been incarnated. Earth is not the only place we can incarnate. So you might actually have some beings from some other realms, some beings from other planets and things like that. So you might have, you don't even know how many people you have, like eight, 10, 12. Oh my gosh. And then more and more people pass on the more and more people that you have as your cheerleaders helping you out. Okay, so here's a couple of spiritual laws that you have to know be life changing seriously number one law of free will they cannot intervene without your permission your guardian angel can't your master guide can't nobody can't 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 you have freaking free will and i understand too that something should be freaking obvious it totally should be like okay it wasn't freaking obvious that i needed help <laughs> but no because we come here to learn and to grow and we can't really do that without freaking challenges so they might be like oh maybe she wants to enjoy this challenge like no i really did need money then <laughs> yeah i really do need my mom to get off my back or you know my kid to freaking behave right now because i'm gonna lose my mind so we definitely need to practice the free will and then also ask permission like give them permission to intervene all right, so the next thing is human beings rule this earthly realm. So I kind of already went over it, but just to reiterate, you have all of the power over this dimension that we're in right now. It was created for humans to live out the human life. Okay, so another thing to do, and we kind of talked about this, is everyone will cross over into the light. Their spirit guide and their angels will always come to get them. So they might not ever be truly stuck, okay? So don't worry about them if you are worried about them. And so if you need to push them away and just imagine a light, you know, down the road or whatever and say, Archangel Michael, if there's any ghost in my house, have them go down the block and because I don't want to buy my house and then create a portal for them to go back home, you know, to the other side and release them with love. You can do something like that. I do that all of the time. And like, like literally almost every single night. <laughs> I don't know if it works or not, but it makes me feel better. Okay. So I want to share with you my nighttime a prayer. This is a prayer that without fail every single day, I, I say it. And it is, I only allow 100% love and light to come into my space. And I only allow the past loved ones that my mom says can come into my space as I sleep. And the reason why that I say this is because I have lost a lot of people recently and I love all of them, but I don't need them all up in my space at the same time. Does that make sense? Like, I don't need to be a God darn freaking family reunion when I'm trying to go to bed and try to sleep. Okay. So I let my mom go ahead and make the termination. And a lot of times I put Archangel Michael. No matter what, I will say, I only allow 100% love and light to come to my space because what that does then, it says the intention that nothing of that is not God can come inside of my space as I sleep. Okay, one thing to know first is that your perspective will create your reality, okay? So in life, you can make choices from love or fear and you can think of love or fear. So one thing you have to realize within yourself is do you automatically go towards the negative thoughts or do you always go towards the positive thoughts and i'm actually going to give you a couple examples okay so what is your first thought when i say this this is a true thing my husband finds a card and it says i'm sorry i had to leave that way what do you think that means where does your mind go i want to tell you mine my first thing is like, oh my God, I feel like someone's reaching out to him saying, I'm sorry I had to leave. And I, I feel like a lot of love coming from it. But at this moment, when my husband found a card that said, I'm sorry I had to leave this way, he immediately thought that I died and was trying to contact me. And he thought that I had sent the card and he was freaking out. But see how he thought of the negative side of things instead of him thinking of oh my god this is a beautiful message from somebody that passed here's another one 
a mom, not me, but one of my clients, basically she prayed and then her child gets hurt. So she prays for the angels to keep her child safe. And then the child goes out and gets hurt like moments later, like pretty good too. What do you think about that? Do you think that when she, as soon as she prayed, something bad happened, Did she prayed to the wrong thing. Was there like an evil attachment to her kid or her or whatever? And they were trying to be mean to her because that's not the way I just seen it. The way that I seen it was she intuitively knew that something was going to happen and that's what caused her to pray. And because she prayed, the child didn't get hurt as bad. That's my, that's my perspective. And we have another one. You see a name on a tombstone and you have this feeling that that is the next person to pass away. Do you see that as something as bad? Do you see this like, oh my God, I cannot believe it. Why is God telling me that this is going to be the next person to pass away? That is evil. That is scary. I don't want to know. La, 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 la. I don't see it that way. How I see it though, is like, oh my God, they're giving me a sign so that I can prepare. They're giving me a sign so that I will be, I will know that spirit, God, angels are with them. And this is a true story. And this did happen. And then I thought of it as a beautiful thing, as a beautiful sign. And then I was able to spend a little bit more time with this person before they passed. And I am like, thank you for letting me know this because I was able to see through some of the lines of what they were saying. They were really sick and I didn't think that they were being honest with us. And I seen their name on a gravesite, and that's when I knew that she was going to go. And so when she passed months later, it didn't come as a shock to me. I seen it as a beautiful thing. But when I told someone else that, they thought immediately it was a horrible thing. And why did God say it? And why did they let me know that? And it's scary. So it's going to be about your perspective. Okay, so just a little bit of a recap, okay? So we talked about a lot. First off, ghost. Remember, usually they're past loved ones, all right? If you get one that's evil or mean, they're probably a grumpy earthbound spirit, Go ahead, get a rescue medium, uphold your spiritual boundaries. You've got some of those tools now that I gave you. The second thing is about the paranormal. First off, reflect on your life path. If you haven't had any, some crazy stuff going on, then you're not going to have it probably going in the next half of your life. And I'm talking about a lot with the scary parts. A lot of times when you look back on like the ghosts that you had, you know, maybe growing up in a haunted house and things like that. Okay. Was it somebody else's past loved one? Was it your past loved one? Or was it, you know, someone who loved the house that you lived in before you did, or were, were they grumpy? You know, so think about those kinds of things and then make it realistic and stop putting some of these Hollywood features on it. Okay. So practice seeing the invitation. So when you are watching those paranormal shows or you're watching those movies and those videos, see if you can tell when that thing was invited in, if it is mean or evil and that kind of stuff, because usually they always portray it, by the way, usually they always portray it. There's some kind of witch doing a spell or there was some kind of Ouija board involved. So see if you can practice that because so far, almost like almost like hundred percent of the time that I can think of that was the case. And believe me, this is based off of real life demonologists who worked on these true cases. And this is what they found every single, every single freaking time those things were invited. Okay, now the spiritual realm, take advantage of the spiritual laws, okay? You have the full authority of what's inside of your space, okay? You can say this, so you can do your nighttime prayer and you can set your spiritual boundaries up. And then- the next thing you're going to do is you're going to become closer to your spiritual team because think about it this way. Let's say that you were a famous person and you had to have a bodyguard. Now you don't know who the heck this bodyguard is. You know, you don't even know his name and he just walks around and you don't really ever talk to him and stuff like that. Like you're not going to feel really close to him. You might really feel like, okay, do you got my back? Like, am I paying him enough? Like, will he take a bullet for me? But if you get to know him and they get to know you and you learn his name and then you guys powwow, and maybe have some dates together and you guys have a little bit of fun together, then you're going to be like, yeah, I know him and I trust him with my life. And I know he'll take a bullet for me. It's the exact same thing with your spiritual team. They're all around you. And the more that you practice connecting to them and talking with them and doing things like that, then the more that they're going to be like, yeah, okay. 
And you're going to be like, they have my back. They are my ride or die partners. And I tell you what, I say this all the time. If you do not have a ride or die partner in this life, then you 100% have it with your spiritual team. They will be your ride or die partners. All you have to do is reach out and start connecting to them. Now you might ask like, Heather, how in the world do I connect to them? There's a zillion ways. Okay. So first off, getting their spirit guides name, going ahead and doing Oracle cards or tarot cards, meditating, journaling, channeling, learning about whatever, practicing your intuition. All those are really great ones. And then I'm going to definitely put a plug in here for the Coffee and Cards Club because that will also get you closer to your spiritual team. It will also get you spiritual besties. And so you can definitely still join right now. That $7 a joint is still there. So it's going to go away. I'll give you a date exactly on the date that's going to go away. So I would definitely jump in now if you can. But that's what I would do if I was you. And basically treat your spiritual connection like a relationship. All right. So are you going to do things to make that relationship flourish? Are you going to go on dates? Are you going to meditate? Are you going to have fun together? Are you going to try and get to know your spirit guides and your angels? And you can go ahead and do the meditations and things like that, but go ahead and ask them for a sign. Like literally right now say, Hey, if you are with me right now, send me a sign, send me your name. All right. I will put some links to the resources in the show notes too, that can help you out. That will be just a little, a little oomph. Okay. <laughs> and so the very last thing that I want to ask you is if you have any questions, so if you have any questions, definitely put them in the comments, reach out to me. I really want to help. I really want to be there. I really want you to overcome your fears because believe me, there is way more beauty in life than, than you'll ever see. Like you don't have to worry about the bad, the good, definitely always the bad. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me for the overcoming the spiritual fears and keep in touch. I will talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in to the Spiritual AF Life podcast. You'll find all the links to resources and more in the show notes. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the incredible episodes that are coming up.